Thank you. Welcome to the Western Iowa Tech Community College production of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Who up? Pardon me? I said, uh, who up? Why don't you give me some positive uh, breathing? Thank Everybody you. Everybody else was quiet. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, got a good crowd, I guess, here. A lively audience. Uh, this is a play that is near and dear to our hearts. It's why we chose it. It first premiered on Broadway in 1963 with Kirk Douglas. It later went on to become a movie that won several Oscars. I think that this production is certainly going to hold its own with those. I ask at this time that you please turn off all of your cell phones, put them on vibrate, or just turn them off if you would. Just disconnect yourself from this 21st century world. We're going back in time with this a little bit. Uh, if your cell phone goes off during the show, it will be confiscated and destroyed. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm not. Confiscated and destroyed. Enjoy the show, everybody. There'll be refreshments during the break, and we'll see you afterwards. the black machine they got it going 18 stories down below the ground they're putting people in one end and out comes what they want the way they do it papa each night they tip the world on its side and everybody loose goes rattling to the bottom then they hook them by the heels and they hang them up and cut them open only by that time they got no innards just some beat up gears and stuff and all they bleed is rust you think I'm raving because it sounds too awful to be true, but my God, there's such a lot of things that's true, even if they never really happen. Medication, all patients to the day room. Medication. Good morning, Mr. Harding. Are you sure? Dear Lord, for the tranquility we are about to receive, we thank thee.
Billy, dear, I spoke to your mother last night. I had to tell her. What did you say? That you were very sorry and had promised not to try it again. Thank you, Miss Ratchet. Drink it all, dear. Good morning, Mr. Scanlon. Mr. Cheswick. Shake, honey, what are these? Medication. Christ, I can see that. What kind? Just swallow them, Mr. Cheswick, please. Just for me. E don't give me that. All I want to know, for the love of it's God. It's all right, Charles. What do you mean it's all right? You don't have to take them. That's what I mean. You just shove any old shit at a man and I, 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 I don't. Oh, well, that's okay then. Good morning, Mr. Martini. Morning! <laughs> Mr. Buckley. <laughs> Fuck them all! <laughs> We have a new admission today. I'd like you to meet him at receiving. Yes, Miss Ratchet. Nurse Lynn, I'll be in the staff room. Behave yourself, boys. Behave yourself, boys. What choice we got? Come back here, you damn Redskin. Come back here. You don't like this, do you? Right. You don't like this, do you? I don't like that look in your eye. Don't like it at all. Look out there! You need some help over there, sweet thing. No, thank you. I'm fine. Your deal, Martine. Hmm? Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> hey, cut it out! What's the matter? There's no one there! You sure? <laughs> There's only four of us, come on now! Okay. to shake it until I fell out of the freaking tree. <laughs> That's it, Billy. Write it down. Well, we're supposed to. Sure, get a gold star by your name. You write down everything I say. And I'll write down everything that you did. Shut up, you two. F -f Fuck them all. <laughs> this place is a madhouse. <laughs> Hello, psychopaths. As president of the Patients' Council, I, Dale Harding, do hereby decree 10 seconds of blessed therapeutic silence. Buddy, you are so wrong. I don't have to do this, and I don't have to do that. <laughs> Morning, buddies. Mighty nice fall day. Jesus, what a sorry looking bunch. Now see here, mister, will you get away from me, boy? Give me a minute to look my new home over, will you? Jeez, what the hell? 
I've never been in an institute of psychology before. <laughs> My name is McMurphy, buddies. R.P. McMurphy. And I'm a gambling fool. <laughs> and what's that you're playing, huh? Pinochle? <laughs> Jesus, ain't you got a straight deck around here? Well, I brought along my own, just in case. <laughs> Every card a picture. <laughs> and check out them pictures, will ya? 52 positions, boys, not one of them the same. <laughs> Easy now, don't smudge them. We got lots of time, lots of games. <laughs> you see, buddies, what happened was, I got in a couple hassles down at the work farm and it seems that the court ruled that I'm a psychopath. And you think I'm going to argue with the court? You bet your bottom dollar I don't. If it gets me all those damn pee fields, I'll be whatever their little heart desires. Be it psychopath or mad dog or werewolf. Because I really don't care if I never see another weed and hold to my dying day. And we just a week out of the I got to get your temperature and I got to get you showered. Look, all you got to do is let me get acquainted with my new buddies here. And if you do one thing more. Mister, you're asking for it. You're going to get it. That's a whole deal better. Now we can get something settled. Which of you's the bold goose, Mooney? I'm asking, which of you's the bold goose, Looney? Well, it's not m m me, mister. I'm not the b bold goose, Looney. Although you could say I'm next in line for the job. Well, I'm glad you're next in line for the job. But since I'm thinking of taking over this whole shebang, maybe you better take me to your leader. Mr. Harding, you're the president of the Patients Council. Does this gentleman have an appointment? Do you have an appointment, Mr. McMurphy? Mr. Harding is a busy man. This busy man, Harding, is he the Bull Goose Looney? That's right. Well, you tell Bull Goose Looney Harding that R.P. McMurphy is waiting to see him, and that this nut house ain't big enough for the two of us. You tell him either he meets me man to man, or he's a yellow skunk and best be out of town by sunset. Billy, you tell this young upstart McMurphy that I'll meet him in the main hall at high noon, and we'll settle this affair once and for all, with libidos ablazing. Billy, you tell him that R.P. McMurphy is used to being top man in every situation. So if he's bound to be a loony, he figures he ought to be the stop down daggone biggest one of all. <laughs> there. And by God, we ain't even spilt a drop of blood. <coughs> now who's the rest of these fellers? Well, uh, this side of the room, we're the acutes. What's acute about you? <laughs> that means that we're presumably curable. But over here at the Chronics, we got a vegetable and a walker. And they ain't curable? What the hell? Hiya, buddy. R.P. McMurphy, how do you do? <laughs> Hi, buddy. Randall P. McMurphy. You got any cigarettes? <coughs> Nothing but. <laughs> What's that you're making? A bomb? It's a blow up the whole stinking world. <laughs> oh man, you got competition. Buddy, my name is R.P. McMurphy, and I don't like seeing a grown man sloshing around in his own water. So why don't you just go and get dried up? Pull the nails out there. Huh? Yeah. Oh.
That's so. And what the hell have they got him strapped down for? I don't like that. No, sir. It just ain't dignified. Ooh. Say, you get your full growth and you're gonna be pretty good size. What tribe is he? Well, I, I don't know. He was here when I came. The doctor said he's a Columbia River Indian. Uh, he used to live up on the waterfalls, but I think that tribe's now defunct. Is that right, Chief? You defunct? He can't hear a word you say. the way you've taken it upon yourself to orient with the other patients, but everything in its own time. You must follow the rules. You know, ma'am, that is the exact thing somebody always tells me about the rules. Just when I'm thinking of breaking every one of them. New admission, Papa. Now they gotta fix him with controls. They got wires running to each man and units planted in our heads. There's magnets in the floor so we can't walk no way but what they want. We got stone brains, cast iron guts, and copper where they took away our nerves. We got cog wheels in our bellies and a welded grin. And every time they throw a switch, it turn us on or off. They got a network clear across the land. Factories like this for fixing up mistakes they made outside. The combine, Papa. Big, big, big. Oh yes, there is too such a thing. They got me way back ago, the way they got to you. Don't 
forget Mr. McMurphy. No gambling for money. Say, is that a two-way system? No, but Mr. Ratchet is a human radio. Is, huh? Well, I may just have to pull her plug. All right, Professor. Ah, and with the deuce showing, there's a pack of marbles as you back down. Group meeting. Time for group meeting. What's going on? Group therapy. Every day this time. comes, it leaves me feeling just awful. Your mother loves you, Billy. Billy, baby. <laughs> Billy, darling. I know, but I'm such a d disappointment to her. I say to her, Mama, I'm not right in the head. I can't even talk straight. And she just keeps on going. And so I want to kill myself. So I try. Is it possible you're trying to punish her? She's sure it's possible. Miss Ratchet, can we talk about somebody else today? You really ought to face it, Billy. Very well. At the close of Friday's meeting, we were discussing Mr. Harding's young wife. The fact that she is extremely well endowed in the bosom. Would anyone care to touch upon this further? Touch upon what? The subject. Oh, I thought you meant touch upon to her. To continue. <laughs> According to notes entered by various patients in the logbook. Good afternoon, doctor. Sorry. Yes, we were talking about Mr. Harding's relations with his wife. Whose wife? Huh. Oh, I I see her. Where? <laughs> Mama Mia, on the Fabana and the Figure and doing the day of my Gosh, what I want to give for that man's eyes. <laughs> Miss Murphy, Randall Patrick. Committed by the state for diagnosis and possible treatment, 35 years old, never married. A history of drunkenness, disturbing the peace, assault and battery, repeated gambling, one arrest for rape. Statutory. With a child of 15. She said she was 17. And Doc, she was plenty willing. A court doctor's examination of the child. Doc, she was so willing, I had to take the padlock in my pants. Our new admission, <laughs> doctor. Seems you know uh, previous history, uh, any time spent in other institutions. Well, Doc, including county and state coolers, mental institutions. Oh, nah, this is my first trip. But I am crazy, Doc, I swear. Here, uh, let me show you that. Other doctor at the Warp Farm, um, where do you put it? Uh, ah, yes. Repeated outbreaks of passion that suggest the possible diagnosis of psychopath. <laughs> the way he explained it, Doc, psychopath means that, and I fight and I fuck. <laughs> oh, excuse me. How do you say it? I'm, I'm overzealous in my sexual relations. Is that real serious, Doc? I mean, you ever been troubled by it? 
No, Mr. McMurphy, I have to admit I haven't. That bit about fighting I completely understand, but man, who ever heard of a man get too much poozle? <laughs> I'm particularly interested in this statement. Don't overlook the possibility that this man may be feigning psychosis in order to dis, uh, disrupt and uh, avoid the work on the farm. Now, what do you think about that, Mr. McMurphy? Do I look like a sane man? <laughs> you should explain the protocol in these meetings. Yes, one of the first rules is the patient must remain seated. Oh, my sure, Doc. You see, uh, we operate on the principle of the therapeutic community. The which? Therapeutic no. community. That means that this ward is a society in miniature, and since society decides who's sane and who isn't, it must measure up. Our goal here is a completely democratic ward governed by the patients working to restore you to the outside. The important thing is to not let anything fester inside you. Talk, discuss, confess. And if you see a patient write something down, uh, say something of significance, make sure you write it down in the logbook for all to see. Like squealing? <laughs> Group therapy. Probe the uh, secrets of the subconscious. Help yourself and your friends. Dig down deep. Bring those old guilts out into the open. What guilts? You have them or you wouldn't be here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And now I think I'm beginning to catch on. Like, like this dream I had the other night, Doc. Could you maybe tell me what it means? You see, it was like, it was like me in this dream, but then again, it, it wasn't me. More like somebody that looked like me. Like, like my daddy. Yeah, it was my daddy for sure. Interesting. Because when I, when I looked at me, or him, I mean, he had this big iron bolt through his jawbone, just like how daddy used to have. Your father had an iron bolt through his jawbone? A regular Frankenstein. How fascinating. I don't think I've ever heard of a similar If case. I may suggest, Doctor, Mr. McMurphy might learn best by example. According to notes entered by various patients in the law book, Mr. Harding has stated that he was uneasy when walking down the street with his wife because of the manner in which men stared at her. He has further said, quote, She damn well gives him reason to stare, unquote. <laughs> yes. He has also been heard to say that he may give her reason to seek sexual attention elsewhere. What reason, Dale? Well, I can't say that I've been notably ardent. Do you mean sexually inadequate? Mm, may maybe he's just, she's just playing too hot for him. That ain't hard <laughs> yeah, 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 I bet he's a afraid of her. Not afraid. Okay, scared. It might be fair to say intimidated. Same thing. I see Mr. Harding has also stated that his wife's ample bosom gives him a feeling of inferiority. So why does he marry a broad with such big knockers to begin with? <laughs> maybe he's just looking for a mother fixation. Maybe, maybe he's never been weaned. <laughs> That's not so. I wanted a, a womanly woman. One who would not compete, but who might help me to... She has commented, Dale, that she finds you less than masculine. Yeah, like that thing you do with your hands. How about it, Harding? <laughs> you chose a woman who was quite obviously your inferior. Don't you find significance in that? Well, yes, of course. But I theorized, it seemed to me, sexually at least. Yeah, you're always saying how she's such a good lady. <laughs> yeah, like what happens in the sack? Complete? Complete psychic impotence. Oh my God, why do I always cry? See, 
Harding, <laughs> wouldn't it be a lot easier to come and admit that you're a faggot? <laughs> All right, knock it off! Mr. McMurphy! Leave the guy alone! Sit down! Listen, buddy, you don't have to take this shit! Doctor, I suggest we close this meeting. Oh? Close it until discipline has improved. <laughs> Say, buddy, is this the way these little meetings usually run? Bunch of chickens at a pecking party? Pecking party? I haven't the faintest notion what you're talking about. Why, I'll just explain. The flock gets sight of a speck of blood on some feather, and they all go to pecking at it. You see? Till there's nothing left but blood and bones and feathers. But usually, a couple of the flock get spotted in the fracas. Then it's their turn. Oh, a pecking party. Well, that certainly is a pleasant analogy, my friend. That's right, friend. And that's exactly what this little meeting reminded me of. And that makes me the chicken with the spot of blood, hey, friend? That's right, friend. And you want to know who pecks the first peck? It's that old nurse, that's who. So it's as simple as that. As stupidly simple as that. You've been on our board six hours and already simplified the work of Freud, Young, and Maxwell Jones and, sum and summed it up in one simple analogy. It's a packing party. Buddy, I'm not talking about Fred Young and, and who's his Jones. I'm talking about this crummy little meeting and what that nurse did to you. Dick to me. In spades. Wait, this is incredible. You completely disregard the fact that everything she did was for my benefit. <laughs> Horse apples. <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed in you, my friend. I had judged you were more intelligent, but it's evident I was mistaken. To hell with you, buddy. Oh, yes. I also noticed your primitive brutality. Psychopath with definite sadistic tendencies probably motivated by unreasoning egomania. And those, those talents definitely qualify you as a therapist, my friend. You know, they, they make you quite capable of critici criticizing Miss Ratchet, although she's a highly regarded psychiatric nurse with 20 years experience in the field. But you, no doubt with your talents, could work subconscious miracles, soothe the aching id, and heal the wounded superego. Wait, you could probably cure the whole ward, vegetables and all, in six months. Ladies and gentlemen, are your money back? Are you telling me that the crap that went on here today is doing some kind of good? Why else would we subject ourselves to it? Miss Ratchet may be a very strict lady, but she's not some kind of monster chicken pecking our eyes out. Oh, no, buddy. She ain't pecking out your eyes. She's aiming right square at the family jewels. Miss Ratchet? What? She's a mother. A tender mother. Oh, don't give me that tender mother loving crap. She's a ball cutter from way back. What? What's she here, my friend? My psychopathic sidekick? Miss Ratchet is a veritable angel of mercy. And <laughs> why everybody knows it. She's, un she's unselfish as the wind, toiling thanklessly for the good of all, day after day, seven days a week. She has no husband, no life, nothing but her work. And everybody knows it. Do you think she likes being stern with us? Mm. Asking those questions, probing our subconscious till it hurts? Oh no, my egomaniac buddy. She's dedicated. She gives every bit of herself. And she desires nothing more on this earth than to see us walk out of here capable and once more adjusted to life. So I assure you, you're wrong, my friend. Our Miss Ratchet is the kindest, sweetest, most benevolent woman that I have. I have ever. <laughs>
you're right about all of it. So why don't you do something? Why? Because the world belongs to the strong, my friend. The rabbit it recognizes the strength of the wolf, so he digs holes and hides when the wolf is about. He doesn't combat. He doesn't challenge the wolf to combat. <laughs> Mr. McMurphy, my friend, I'm not a chicken. I'm a rabbit. All of us here, rabbits. Billy, hop up, hop up around for Mr. McMurphy here. Cheswick, show him how furry you are. Oh, they're bashful. Isn't that sweet? Shut your mouth! Tell us, friend. What would you have us do? Raise Jack! Tell her to go to hell! Try it, buddy. They'll send you right on up to the stir. Or down to the shock shop. <laughs> the what? The electroshock therapy. It's a device which combines the best features of the sleeping pill, the electric chair, and the torture rack. You kidding me? Hell no. They strap you to a table, and they have wires, and they put them on each side of your head. Zap! Punishment and therapy in one shocking package. Chief Broom there, he's had 200 treatments. Well, what about that little fart of a doctor? Oh, she requires his approval, but that's just a formality. He's got 200 patients, a bleeding ulcer, and no desire to make waves. What's wrong, friend? Losing your revolutionary spirit? Well, what about this Democratic Ward stuff? Why don't you take a vote? What do we vote? That, that the big nurse can't ask us any more questions? Can't look at us in a certain way? <laughs> can't send us to the shock shop? <laughs> Tell us, friend. What shall we vote? Well, hell, anything. Don't you see you gotta do something to show that you still got some balls? You say the chief is scared, huh? Well, look at you guys. I ain't seen a scareder looking bunch in my life. I'm not. skin off my ass. How true. And I sure as the hell wouldn't want some fiend of a nurse after me with 3,000 volts. Naturally. So what the hell? Well, Mr. McMurphy, welcome to the club. You say she can't do nothing to you unless she gets your go. That's right. Unless she makes you crack up some way like, like busting her in the nose or cussing her out. You'd be safe as long as you kept your temper. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> so, you birds think you got the champ there, huh? Well, how'd you like to put some money on it? On what? That I can get the best of her. <laughs> you propose to make a wager on that? I'm making a wager that I can put a burr up that nurse's butt within a week. That I can bug her so she comes apart at them neat little seams and shows you that she ain't unbeatable. One week, boys, and if I don't got her to whether she doesn't know whether to shoot or go blind, money's yours. Oh, boy. Who's got ten bucks they're willing to lose, huh? Mr. McMurphy, this deserves odds. Twenty to your ten if you won't do it. Oh, a hey a hey a hey Step right up, suckers. It's a spin of the wheel, a turn of the card. Battle of the century. One week, seven days, no holds barred. R.P. McMurphy versus the big nurse. To a knockout decision or a draw. Two to one is the odds, boys. Get your money down. A hey a hey a hey I bet. Five dollars. Oh, five for the road runner. <laughs> <laughs>
Gentlemen, it's time for occupational therapy. Mr. McMurphy, what was that little activity? We're just playing a little game, ma'am. Are you sure that's not some form of gambling? Why, heavens no, ma'am! <laughs> Gambling hell. This is a sure thing. You see that, Papa? They got the place on automatic pilot for the night. It's in the night they do the things to us they want, things too horrible for day. And if the night ain't long enough, they slow it down. Oh yes, Papa, that's a fact. They got fake time they can speed up or slow down. I seen three months go by once in an hour. I see three days go by like this. There you are, ladies. Don't want to lose you. Chief, sack time! What are you doing, Chief? <sighs> Holy Christ! There's about 10,000 pieces of gum down there. Is that where you keep a stash, Chief? Hold on. We can do better than that. Juicy fruit okay? <laughs> there you are. Add a boy engine. Put a nice fresh taste in your mouth. No, Chief. When I hollered, you sure did jump. Thought somebody told me you was dead. Finger marks and smudges. Scuffs all over the place. You know, old Big Nurse, she just, she raised cane for sure. <laughs> She's gonna beat us with that big gray bag. You know what, uh, let just beat her back. <laughs> Go, man. Bust inside the head with this bucket. <laughs> Get her down. <laughs> and just kind of stuff her all down with her mouth. <laughs> and stuff this whole damn mess inside her mouth. <laughs> oh, your horses are hungry. That's what she did say. Come sit down beside me and feed them some hay. Morning, boys. Oh, my horses ain't hungry. They won't eat your hay. 
So fare thee well, darling, I'm gone on my way. Say, buddy, what's the chance of me getting some toothpaste for my grinders? Cabinet don't open till 6.45. That worthy keep it locked up? That's right. Now, why do you think they go and do that? I mean, ain't like it's dangerous. Ward policy, that's the reason. Ward policy. Now, why? Well, what do you suppose if everyone would brush their teeth whenever they felt the notion? Ah, so you're saying ward policy is for them that can't brush their teeth after every meal. My God, don't you see? Yeah, I think I'm beginning to see. You're saying that people be brushing their teeth whenever the spirit moved them. That's right, why? And Lord, can you imagine teeth being brushed at 6.30, 6.20, maybe even 6 o'clock in the morning? Oh. Come on, Williams, we got work to do. Oh, hey, hey, hold on. What's this here? That's soap powder. Well, I generally use paste, but we'll dig into that ward policy shit later. <laughs> oh, 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 Chief. Low in her mama's ear. I love that gambling man. <laughs> Haven't you anything better to do than stand around the gate? Get this place spotless. Yes, Miss Ratchet. Gentlemen, hadn't you best get dressed? One Christmas, Papa, here at the hospital. It was right at midnight, and there's a big wind, and the door blows open. Whoosh! And here comes a fat man, all dressed in red, with a big white beard and mustache. Ho, 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 he says. Like to stay, but I must be hurrying along. Very tight schedule, you know. Well, the A's jumped him and pinned him down with their flashlights and gave him a tranquilizer and sent him right on up to Disturbed. They kept him six years, Papa. And when they let him go, he was clean shaved and skinny as a pole. Hey, where is 
Big Murphy. I suggested this would be a good time for his interview with Dr. Spidey. We're not gonna make any decisions, you understand. I just don't think he should be allowed to go on upsetting other patients. <laughs> I ain't upset. <laughs> Neither am I. You may not realize you are. However... <laughs> right, Doc? What do you think? It's a charming notion. A real blast. Doctor, doctor, we have a meeting in progress. Oh, excuse me. Go right ahead. <coughs> yes, we were just discussing the matter of morale. Well, that's exactly what we were talking about. I made the suggestion that... Oh, was it you? Oh, hell no, Doc. It was your idea. I suggested, well, what would you think if we were to have a carnival? Uh, yeah. carnival? Yeah, right here on the ward. We could have games, booths, decorations. Wouldn't it be fun? What do you think, man? Oh, I think that's a great <laughs> idea. And not without therapeutic value. <laughs> hell yes, lots of therapeutics at a carnival. Scanning can do his human bomb act. And I, I can make a retoss out of occupational therapy. Me, I'd be glad to run a skill will. A hey, a hey, a hey. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, and try your luck. A bonanza for a dime, a prize on every spin of the wheel. Fine, fine. I could sell things. <laughs> I'm rather good at palm readings. Oh. Well, what do you think, Miss Ratchet? A carnival? right here on the ward? I agree. It might have therapeutic possibilities, but it must first be discussed in staff before a decision can be reached. Wasn't that your intention, doctor? <laughs> yeah, well, of course. I mean, I, you know, feeling out some of the patients, but uh, the staff meeting, certainly. Also, doctor, I suggest that Mr. McMurphy's request for a visitor as he puts it, a twitch named Candy Star, be denied until he becomes more familiar with the rules in this board. I, uh, Mr. McMurphy showed me his request in my office, and well, you know, he's been here a week already, so I signed it. I see. Very well. Billy Bibbit and his speech problem. Can you recall, Billy, when you first started having difficulties? When did you begin to stutter? The, the, the very f first word I said, I st st stuttered. I said, m -m mama. And then when I proposed to a girl, I f f loved it. I said to her, honey, will you until <laughs> she b broke out the laugh. <laughs> Your mother has spoken to me about this girl, Billy. Apparently she was quite a bit beneath you. Was it that which frightened you? No. Then what was it? I was in love with her. She... Let me quote from your mother. She was a designing little slut who only wanted to marry my Billy because... No, no she was a l lovely g girl and... Say, I got something to take up. If you wish to speak, you must first be recognized. You mean you don't know me? <laughs> I know you, but I don't recognize you. Say, you got a hell of a problem. Would you like to discuss it? <laughs> Doctor, I wonder if we shouldn't discuss patient McMurphy. In what respect? I've observed a definite deterioration in discipline since he has arrived on this ward. Perhaps another form of therapy. What you got in mind, huh? Hook me up to your little battery charger? For your own good, Randall. In a pig's gizzard. You know, I must say, nurse, I have to agree with patient McMurphy. I find him quite lucid, quite in touch. And despite his past record, uh, he has exhibited no signs and no tendencies toward violence. So. I must conclude that the electroshock therapy is not warranted. Very well. If there's nothing further... Doc, I got a little... Doctor, mad. you might want to explain to McMurphy that the purpose of these meetings is therapy, and that these petty grievances... Petty? You call the World Series petty? The World <laughs> Series? Why, sure, Doc, the big games! And it starts Friday, and you only got this rule about watching TV at night. Okay, let's change it to the afternoon. 
For therapeutic reasons. Therapeutic as all hell. Or perhaps were you hoping to make bets on the games? What do you say, boys? Don't you want to watch those games? Cheswick. Why not? <laughs> Scanlon? I, I don't know, Maggie. <laughs> Mr. Scanlon, as I recall, you refused to eat for three days until we changed television time from 6 to 6.30. A man needs to see the news. God, they could have blown us clear to hell in a damn near a week before we found out. Are you telling me that there's anything therapeutic about the news? Well, maybe they won't bomb us this week. Atta boy. Well, let's take a vote. All those in favor, raise your hands. Hey, what is this crap? I thought you could vote on things like this. Ain't I right, Doc? Okay. Who wants to watch those games? What's the matter with you guys? Three, Mr. McMurphy. Just three. Not sufficient enough to change board policy. Now, if we may terminate this meeting? Yeah. Let's terminate this lousy meeting. Listen, Rachel. Some of us have been here a long time, and some of us will be here a long time after you're gone, after the World Series is over. I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Harding, what's the matter with you? What are you guys afraid of? Why, you bunch of gutless wonders. I ought to just leave you to her. Yeah, that's what I ought to do. I ought to just bust on out of here and nail the door shut behind. Yeah, yeah, you talk so tough. Just how would you d do it? Forty ways. Name one. You think I'm kidding, huh? There, that thing Billy's sitting on. I could just pick it up and, and throw it through that mesh window. I don't recall anything about psychopaths being able to move mountains. <laughs> Hell, are you telling me that I can't lift that dinky thing? That dinky thing weighs a quarter ton. And it contains all the electrical equipment for the station. Hell yes, Mac. Try it. You do it, and you'll short circuit this, short, short circuit this whole damn hospital and blow it clear into orbit. Who's got five bucks they're willing to lose, huh? This is more foolhardy than that bet against the big nerve. Oh, five bucks, you peckerheads. Because nobody's not going to tell me I can't do anything till I try. Here, all your IOUs from Blackjack. I'll put up the whole shebang. Double or nothing. You're on. Cover. Oh, Scanlon, get the women and children someplace safe. <laughs> You give it up? Hell no. Now it's just a warm up. Here goes the real effort.
if that thing, but I try. God damn it, I tried.